Hello and welcome to another session on Gems of Geometry. As uh, we have discussed many important concepts, so furthering that pursuit, we are going to discuss another one now. So this particular theorem says that if circles are constructed on two CVNs as diameters, their radical axis passes through the orthocenter H of the triangle. Now the prerequisite for this session would be uh, the concept of uh, CVN. You know that a CVN is nothing but a line joining any of the vertex to any of the points on the other side of uh, the vertex in a triangle. That's a CVN. So in the adjoining figure, you can say uh, BE, AD and CF are CVNs. It's another fact that they are a special type of CVN, which is called an altitude because they are perpendicular to the sides here. Then there's another concept of radical axis. What is radical axis? Before uh, getting into radical axis, we had discussed something called power of a point with respect to a circle. So if you remember, uh, or if you don't really, if you haven't been through those sessions, I would urge you can go back to those session, sessions where we have discussed what does a power of a point with respect to a circle mean. But just to give you a quick recap, the power of a circle, let's say a point P, uh, inside or outside the circle is nothing but a d square minus r square where d is nothing but distance between distance between uh, point p and center okay and r is nothing but the radius of the circle radius of the same circle so this is called power of a point with respect to circle and we also saw that the power of a point with respect to circle is nothing but for example you know let me it's it's better to take an example and illustrate so let's say we have a point p here let's say this is p so power of a point p here in this case uh, would be nothing but let's say if i join the let's say a chord passing through p okay so we had discussed in the previous session we are not going to discuss the proof once again i would request if you don't know this concept you can have a view of the previous sessions where we have discussed the power of a point now power of a point p let's say this is a and this is let's say a dash so power of a point is also defined as uh, p is equal to uh, power sorry power power of the point is equal to a p into p a dash okay so let's say p is lying on a chord then uh, a and a dash are the points on the circumference or a a dash is the chord then power is also defined power of which point p is defined as a p into p a dash this was the information now in this case if you see h happens to be the ortho center here ortho center is nothing but point of concurrence of all the three altitudes of a triangle so ortho center h is the ortho center so if h is the ortho center and h happens to be let's say if I, I want to find out uh, the power of point H with respect to a given circle, then H must lie on one of the chords and uh, then this kind of a relationship will give you the power of H. Okay, so we'll park this discussion for some, for some time. Let's now understand, um, um, you know, another, another important fact or another important property of the orthocenter. Now, if you see um, H is the ortho center and now they are talking about a CVN. Let me just remove all these points. So they are talking about a CVN. Let's draw a CVN, guys. So if I draw from A, let's say A, um, let's say A, P is the CVN. Okay, A, P is the CVN. Now, if A, P is the CVN and if you draw a circle, using ap as the diameter then clearly point d will lie on that circle isn't it it will be something like that so roughly drawing like that right so why would d lie on the circle because ap is the diameter and if you see adp so let me write that angle adp is 90 degrees isn't it so if adp is 90 degrees and ap is the diameter then clearly d must lie on the semicircle so right why because in a semicircle the angle subtended by a diameter is 90 degrees so hence we can claim that uh, d lies d lies on the circle on the circle with ap as diameter isn't it 
we can say that now can we now if you see now h happens to be h is now inside the circle h is a point h is a point inside inside or even if it is outside doesn't matter so h is a point inside outside let's say outside right uh of a circle of a circle with dia with diameter how much ap meaning thereby i can find out the power of point h so power of point h power of power of h will be how much as per the previous discussion so ad happens to be the chord so hence i can say power of h is ah power of h is nothing but ah into h d isn't it yep ah into h d similarly and so hence what is it so ap is a cvn and using ap as a cvn as a diameter if you draw a circle then the power of point h with respect to that circle will be ah into h d so now come let us consider another cvn from let's say point b so if you draw another cvn let's say this is another cvn and let's call it q bq bq is a cvn now if you see bq is a cvn then clearly e lies on that circle e lies on that circle which right where bq is the diameter why again the same logic e happens to be lying on a circle whose diameter is bq correct why because the angle subtended by a diameter on the semi circle or the circle is 90 degree and be happens to be 90 degree here right so hence clearly e lies on that circle so we can find out the power of point h with respect to that circle this new circle also right whose diameter is bq correct so in that case what will be the power of h in that case power of h power of h with respect to let's say i am naming this as bq bq is the diameter so in this case it was uh, ap right so ap was the diameter here power of h with respect to bq will be clearly equal to eh or bh into he isn't it bh into he no problems right so this is what uh, we can clearly find out yeah so power of h with respect to ap is this power of h with respect to bq is this now they are saying that uh, there are two circles one with you know um, diameter ap and another circle with diameter bq now what is meant by radical axis so radical axis is nothing but if you remember in the previous session you can check radical axis is radical axis is nothing but locus of locus of all points whose power with respect to the given circles is always equal or are always equal that means if i find out the power of a point with respect to circle one and find out the power of the circle with respect to circle 2 then both of them will be equal now the theorem claims that if you draw two such circles with two cvns as diameter then the radical axis will pass through h that is h lies on the radical axis of the two circles right that means the power of h with respect to the first circle as well as power of h with respect to the second circle must be equal which means this must be equal to this which which means if we somehow prove that a h into h d is equal to b h into h e then our job is done if somehow we prove that this is true then mean the power of power of h with respect to both the circles are equal that means whatever is the radical axis of the two, two given circles h would be one point of them on them isn't it one point on that radical axis so the point the, the entire problem is reduced to proving this so let's say if you can prove ah into hd is equal to bh into he or not once again just to reiterate and re-emphasize once more 
So power of h with respect to the first circle is this a h into h d. Power of h with respect to the second circle is b h into h e. Now the theorem claims that h lies on the radical axis of both the circles. And what is the radical axis of the two circles? Nothing but a locus of all the points uh, such that the power of the point with respect to both the circles are equal. Now if h happens to be on the radical axis that means the power of h with respect to the first circle must be equal to power of h with respect to the second circle. That means we have to prove that a h into h d is equal to b h into h e. That is this is what we have to achieve. Let's say we let's find out if we can really achieve that. Okay. So how to achieve that? So it will be very simple to see again. Let me do it like that. Yeah. So now consider uh, angle B D A is equal to angle B E A B E A B D A is equal to angle B E A and both of them are equal to 90 degrees. That means what can we say if we draw if we draw a circle circle with A B as the diameter A B as the diameter diameter then then point d and e would would lie on the circumference is it d and e will lie on the circumference now in a given circle we know that let's say if there is a two there's a circle okay Let's say there is a circle. There's a circle. If you draw two chords here, we had you know again proven this in the previous sessions. So let's say the two chords are there A, B, and C, D. Okay, then we had proved that A, let's say this is P. So A, P into P, B is equal to C, P into P, D. Right? By similar triangles theorem, we can prove that and we have done that you can check it check it out in the previous session okay now if that is so then if you consider a circle passing through or a, with a b as diameter and passing through d and e then clearly h is the point of intersection of two chords which two chords so two chords are a d and a e are the two chords are two chords correct two chords intersecting at h right therefore what, we, what do we infer so that means b h into h e will be equal to a h into h d by this theorem the proof of which we can check out in the previous sessions so hence if you see this is actually true guys so if you see this is what we needed to prove isn't it so b h into h e is equal to a h into h d this is what we needed to prove and it's actually true it's actually true therefore we can conclude conclusion so what's the conclusion conclusion is clearly h lies or power of we can say power of power of h with respect to with respect to both circles with respect to circles with cvns a p and b q as diameter as diameters are equal power of h with respect to circles with cvns ap and bq as diameters are equal that means this implies h lies on the radical axis of both the circles Right, this is what we needed to prove, and hence proved. I hope you understood the theorem. Interesting theorem talks about the radical axis passing through the orthocenter of uh, a radical axis of which two circles? Circles made on any two CVNs diameter will pass through the orthocenter. Okay.